So here's a solution to that uh, first complicated question that, uh, that I gave you, right? Uh, I'm sure you read it, um, what's going on. So I'm going to start talking about the physics behind it, right? So the given information required is already given to us. So here, what's going on from energy point of view, right? So I, I, I label those points one, two, three, four, and five on purpose. So let's see what happened, all right? So we have the mass A first, right? So what we can write is that, so now I'm doing the analysis. So what we can write is that the energy, a mechanical energy at point one is equal to the mechanical energy at point two before collision. Because remember at point two, there is gonna be a collision. And that collision is gonna be also uh, inelastic, right? So I can start writing here that E1 is half of M, uh, sorry, half of uh, K X squared. Remember, we're looking for K, okay? So that's our first equation, okay? Uh, and then I can uh, write the following uh, thing, what happened after collision, right? So I'm gonna write this E2 prime, which is the energy of both a and B after the collision, it's going to be the energy of the system pretty much. It's going to be equal to the energy at point three at the top, and it's going to be the same as energy at point four because there, remember there is no friction up to point four, so the system is conservative system. Okay, so this is after collision. Of course, at point two we do have a collision, so I have to write that fact that PA plus PB before collision is equal to, and let's write them as vectors, the P of A plus B after collision, right? Remember, it's an elastic collision, all right? So, so far, I'm just writing the equations or basic laws that uh, I'm, I'm applying, right? So remember, conservative system, and initially, and now what happened from, and then non-conservative, what happened from four to five? Well, we have uh, E5, the energy at the very end is zero, right? Because pretty much the two masses, the two blocks that will stop, and it does not have uh, potential energy anymore because this is the ground, right? So it's uh, it has a zero height, okay? Um, so we're looking for K, so we have to start working up our way now until we figure out what's going on. So we start writing, okay? So in order to, um, oh, I, uh, let me label the equations here. All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's continue now. So we have, uh, we, in order to figure out or to write something more about the inelastic collision, I need to know what is a velocity. So let me start with equation number three here. Because that's what kind of uh, com um, implicates or complicates a a qu the situation a little bit. So we have MA, right, times V at point two, okay, plus zero because uh, object B is at rest, as, uh, as it was stated, okay. Uh, it's uh, so V. B is actually zero meters per second. Uh, it's equal to MA plus MB times, I'm gonna write this as V2 prime, which is gonna be the velocity of both uh, objects stuck together. Uh, since MA and uh, MB are the same, so MA is equal to MB is equal to Let's call both of them M, right? Um, what we can do now, uh, we can, uh, so this is equation number uh, six, this is seven. So now what I have is MV is equal to 2M V2 prime, right? So MV2, sorry. Okay. So we need to know what this V2 is. Okay. So we're going to use uh, the first equation here, right? The fact that energy at point one and energy at point two of object A is still the same, different forms, right? So we're gonna use the fact that E1 is equal to E2, okay? Or if we write it in expanded form, 
half of kx squared is equal to half of mv2 squared, all right? Um, of course, we've worked with this equation before. Uh, we solve for uh, v2, so v2 is x square root of k over m. Remember, everyone, that we do need to find k, right? So as you can see, I'm carrying out that k into further equations, right? So now we go back to our um, um, uh, momentum uh, uh, equation or conservation of momentum. And let's recall that we have m times v2, which now is x square root of k over m, is equal to 2m times this v2 prime, okay? So here, as you can see, we can solve for v2. So we know now what v2 is. v2 is x over 2 square root of k over m. All right, so we know, sorry, v2 prime. Remember, this is the velocity or speed of a plus b right after collision. All right. Uh, so now we go back to our energy. So we go back to conservation of energy. Remember, again, we cannot find anything because we don't know what K is, and that's what we're looking for. Conservation of energy. All right. So what we have now, remember, we have E2 prime, which means the energy of A and B after collision is going to be the same as E3. Okay, so we need to work with this equation. So hopefully at point three, we will know something more. Okay, so let's write it. Uh, e2 prime is uh, only kinetic, right? Because there is no potential. So we have half of ma plus mb, which is 2m times that v2 prime squared. And that is equal to E3. So let's go back to point three everyone so point three it has potential right because there is a height which we all realize that is actually 2r okay so it has potential and uh, kinetic so it has half of 2m times v3 squared plus mg h right uh, or if i want to write it now to simplify it a little bit i have m because these twos here cancel out v prime two squared is equal to m v three squared plus m g sorry not m this is 2m actually i apologize because the mass is 2m right so 2m g and the height is 2r all right so now remember that v2 prime is uh, this square root of sorry x over 2 square root of k over m so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna substitute it there all right so i have m oh and you notice that there is an m in every equation anyway so we can actually cancel them out so now I have V prime, V2 prime, which is um, X over 2 times square root of K over M squared is equal to V3 squared plus 4 MG, sorry, 4 GR. Right? Uh, now, this v3 how do i work with this we're going to use circular motion to figure out what's going on with if v3 now remember i wrote uh, uh, when the car is at the top there are two forces right if i were to draw for everybody diagram one is gravity remember the mass is 2m and the other one is the normal force okay and this is the center and this is the centripetal acceleration however remember i said that 
this car is barely making it at the top, so which means normal force is equal to zero. So which means our centripetal force is actually is going to be just a gravitational force. And according to Newton's second law, that's going to be equal to m v3 squared over r, right? The velocity at the top uh, over r, which is a centripetal acceleration. And again, we simplify it and see what we get. We get v3 squared equal to 2 r g. Okay, so now what we can do is, so this is 18, this is 19. We can substitute that one on that equation there. So we have x squared over 4k over m 